Hey everybody, and welcome to the second video in which we're going to explain about how we can build an armature with the help of Z-spheres. And in this part, we're going to use Z-sketching. All right, so what we're going to start with is the model that we made in the first video where we explained uh, how the Z-spheres work. And we quickly managed to uh, make this humanoid looking uh, model. All right, now we saw that when you press the A, when we are working with Z spheres, when you press the A, you get this uh, preview of the adaptive skin. And then if we make it a uh, poly mesh, then we can start sculpting on it. Well, when you're working with Z spheres, you have a different option as well instead of going with the adaptive skin and then making it so that you can use uh, the geometry that you get from these uh, funnels or the, uh, this geometry that's connecting all of the z-spheres you can resort to a different uh, way of making your base mesh and that is by using z-sketching so what is z-sketching and how does it work well, in order to use Z-sketching, you have to have an underlying mesh on which you're going to start building something. In this case, this is our mesh, or we're going to use the base armature from the Z-spheres. So in order to get to the Z-sketching, we're going to have to go over here where it says Z-sketch, click on it, and then you have this button where it says Edit Sketch. As soon as you click on it, you're going to notice two things. First of all, the color here is going to change, and then we're going to have a bit more options over in the brush settings. So click on Edit Sketch. As you can see now, there's no longer uh, differences in color. And now when we press the B, we have these new brushes over here and different options on the bottom. So the first thing you're going to notice is now when you go over your mesh, if you click and drag, you get these, um, well, this interesting look on your model where it's like it's being filled with tubes or clay tubes. Now, the interesting thing about this is that these clay tubes can be used like this. And then when you smooth them down, they don't smooth like geometry, but rather they are going to try to get on top of the underlying mesh like this. So as you can see, it can be a very interesting way of making muscle mass because you're basically just like building one on top of the other like this. Then you smooth them down, put in another one, smooth that one down and you're basically layering in muscles and it can give you some nice results eventually if you choose to do it this way me personally i'm not the greatest fan of this because mainly i'm i'm not really accustomed to using them but it's a valid way of adding geometry and now here is the interesting part about using this once you put in all of this geometry even when you go down and smooth it in like this now if i press the a button or the one we had for adaptive skin we press a we no longer get the base of the armature but instead we only get the geometry that we uh, made with the help of these clay tubes so like this so i press a you can see now we have geometry but here's the interesting part in this case if we go over here in adaptive we're going to see that we are no longer getting an adaptive skin even when we press a we are no longer getting the adaptive skin uh, properties the reason for this is that when you're using z sketch and when you're in the edit sketch, you're no longer creating an adaptive skin, but you're actually creating a unified skin, which is this over here on top of it. So when you press one, you get that option preview. You can increase the resolution. And this pretty much works as DynaMesh. The bigger it is, the more resolution you're going to get. For example, let's try and get in a bit more geometry in here. Let's give it some something to work with. 
Okay. Make sure this is okay like this. Okay. This can be connected like that. We have some leg. The definition is nowhere to be found, but that is not a problem because we're just trying to simply make something that we can later use as a base. As you can see here, we're starting to get somewhere. Let's put in some to cover. It's not really important here, but eh, there we go. Now we have something that's resembling a base mesh on which we can start sculpting. But here's the thing. Uh, when you press the A, you see all the geometry over here. If I increase the resolution to, let's say, 256, then it takes a bit more time to calculate, but as you can see, it's a much more clearer uh, look now. We can then smooth in this, and as you can see, we have a very nice look. Now, here's the thing. The only reason why I uh, think that this could be useful for someone is, for example, if you want, just want to add in uh, geometry, I would probably advise you to go in and manually add in all the geometry that you need with the help of either the clay brush or the clay buildup standard or pretty much any brush for that matter. Uh, this brush, on the other hand, has one unique uh, opportunity you can actually click and drag outwards so you get something like this and when you get something like this then you can draw from uh, from under it and maybe even make something like this and then interconnect it like this and all of a sudden you basically have geometry that you can uh, use later on for maybe something like if you were sculpting wings or I don't know anything that would require you to have that type of geometry going outwards from the actual mesh if you would have to do it uh, the standard way you would have to append an extra um, sphere or anything else and then dynamesh it outwards it can be a drag a bit but still this is a valid way of making the geometry but for example let's say we want to uh, retain the geometry just made from the unified skin but we also want to retain the geometry that we have with the adaptive skin the way to do it would be click on make unified skin and again it's going to uh, add it in as an extra um, sub tool. There we go. Z sphere here. Go down to Z sketching. Edit sketch. Turn off. Press A. Now add this as an adaptive skin. And once you have both of these, you can go into your adaptive skin. Go sub tool and here append what we just made and this way now we have both the original and we have the new that we just made with the unified skin and there we go with that we can wrap up this uh, short uh, introduction to Z sketching and if you haven't watched the previous video for Z spheres I would advise you to go ahead and check it out and with those two videos done, you can pretty much get an idea of how quickly you can get in uh, and start an actual base for sculpting in ZBrush. Now, if we would have to do something like this in either uh, Max or Maya or Blender, we would take we would it would take a bit more time before you were able to get some idea on how your mesh is going to look like. This way you can uh, quickly get a base on which later on you can, just as you can see here, you can start refining it, adding in details uh, to whatever way you want to make it. Get in like this, use the clay tube, remove whatever it is that you don't like and start detailing it until you get it to a point that is pretty much 
what your idea for that sculpt is. So I hope you guys had fun. You managed to learn something new. If you have any questions, leave them below. I will meet you in the comment section of the video. If you enjoyed this video, then please do click the like button. And if you're not subscribed, now is a great time to do so. So as always, thank you very much for watching and I will see you all guys in the next video. Bye-bye.